Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Meteorbarks Weather Eastern and Weather Northeastern. Yeah, we've got some big old severe weather problems, and this is going to be going on throughout Tuesday night into Wednesday as this spreads eastward. This big old storm system in the central states is going to eject to the northeast here and cause major problems here, uh, especially on Wednesday across parts of the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Take a look at this. Yeah, this storm is not over. It is just beginning, and it is going to propagate that severe weather eastward. Let's get into it. And really, as you can see here, what is actually going on, you know, propagating the severe weather outbreaks? It's the same exact weather pattern we've had pretty much all winter long. We have these troughs that dig out west. We have the low pressure that forms around the Colorado area and ejects to the northeast like that. And as you know, in the east, that gave many of you a snowless winter. This pattern just seems to be a pattern that we just can't get rid of, and that's going to propagate us throughout severe weather season. You can see that one's a little bit further to the north. This is towards April 12th. Um, so yeah, we start to push the pattern a little bit north, but look at this. Towards the end of this forecast loop, you can actually see the telltale signs here of something developing. So severe weather going from early Wednesday morning through Wednesday night. This is what we got look to look forward to here. Yes, the severe weather is going to be heading east. And that, my friends, there is an enhanced variety from Nashville, Detroit, Columbus, Chicago. Yeah, things are going to be getting rough throughout the night, Tuesday night, Wednesday, and then Wednesday night as this race is eastward here. And you know what? This large area, too, of slight risk here into the yellow zone so yeah damaging with large hails but yeah the this here into the orange zone i'm concerned greatly also about tornadoes so here's our convective available potential energy look at these red zones back here up towards 4,000 joules per kilogram you know all the way into the yellow zones 2,000 yeah so this is the most yeah this is crazy amount of cape as we go towards 3 a.m and look at that. There's going to be a big push. Even in the green zones here, you're at 1,200. That's still pretty decent. All getting into western New York, western Pennsylvania. This is 10 a.m. on Wednesday, April 5th. And look at this. Yeah, this cape's just going to keep streaming to the northeast here. These yellow zones, we're getting into that 2,500 range. So please heed the warnings. There's so many areas that are going to be affected by this on Wednesday as we head throughout the day. And look at that. That spreads to the east. Even Cape around 1,000 up here towards Syracuse, Binghamton. This is 12 a.m. on Wednesday night. Yeah, and the, look, you're across the south. You're definitely going to have to keep an eye out, too, because this is going to continue to the east. You see the Cape as we head through Thursday afternoon, 2 p.m. Yeah, these areas across Georgia and the Carolinas definitely have to keep a watch. And here's the significant tornado parameter, the SIGTOR as we call it. Take a look at this. Yeah, this is some pretty significant SIGTOR here across parts of eastern Oklahoma, has stretching up into parts of Missouri and even into northern Illinois here. I mean, we're getting up towards these pink areas, 4.6. You know, you get into those ranges, even 1.9, 2.6 into the orange zones. This is quite a bit in the way of instability. And watch this as we go forward here. As we head throughout the early morning hours, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., here's the tornado threat. See it kind of progress to the east here, even getting into the parts of northern Indiana, central Illinois, southeastern part of Missouri. So this is where the dynamics are with this storm, and that's going to head to the northeast. Look at that towards the Chicago area and northeast of Chicago, and then as we head into parts of Michigan and even Ohio here. Definitely keep an eye to the sky. You know, we'll have some areas of tornado watches, and I'm really concerned up here in the parts of Michigan. Look at this. Detroit by 5 p.m. This is statistically when most tornadoes occur, especially up north here, right around that 5 p.m. mark. And look at stretching down into parts of the Mississippi Valley. Even into western New York here, we got a little bit of a flare up too as we get towards that warm front. So please. Heed the warnings, and that kind of fizzles into a damaging straight line wind event as we go throughout the rest of the evening. So as you can see, you know, overnight Tuesday night, we're going to continue to get the severe weather out in the Midwest. And what's going to happen with that? That's going to lift a, to the north here, you can see. And then across parts of Missouri as well, we're going to see a more linear type of outbreak here as we go throughout the night. This is 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Now you can see this lifts to the north, so we'll have some strong thunderstorms up here into the north central part of Michigan and then down into parts of Illinois here, 
parts of Missouri, eastern Missouri to be exact here, and through central Missouri. And look at this, down into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we could be seeing some strong thunderstorms, damaging wind, large hail, some tornadoes possible. Now look how this kind of congeals to the east. This is 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. So yeah, key areas for your morning commute, the Little Rock area, St. Louis, all the way up to Chicagoland area. Take a look at this. Yes, we have some strong thunderstorms all the way over to the eastern Great Lakes as well, Toronto, Buffalo area. And we're warming it up here across the northeast. So as we continue throughout the day, let's see what this holds for us. That severe weather is going to be heading east throughout the day. Now, we see a little bit of a lull in activity with the exception for northern New York State here. Some of these here on the southern end could become severe as well as Lake Erie region. So watch out for that around noon here. The big story, though, is going to be the developing system here across parts of of the Ohio Valley. Watch this area and this area in particular. As we go throughout the day, we're going to start to see that instability increase tremendously here. And look at this. This is by 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Take a look at this. Let me just back this up a few frames here. Because you can see what's going on here. Look at New York State here. Some of these in upstate New York, the southern tier, Finger Lakes area, yeah, we could get some pretty strong thunderstorms here on the backside of this precipitation shield. And look what's going on here across the Ohio Valley. We start to get these lone supercells developing all the way down through the Mississippi Valley into parts of eastern Texas towards Houston. Yeah, this is where things are going to start to get a little bit real here. And as we continue through the forecast period here, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., look at this. Things really start to explode here. From eastern Texas, you can see all the way up through central part of Louisiana, the Mississippi River, Memphis, all the way up to Evansville, and just west of Cincinnati, and then we get west of Toledo here. Detroit as well, you're going to get on the act. Look at the thunderstorms blossoming across parts of Lake Erie here, 6 p.m., and yeah, we're going to get some strong thunderstorms here into parts of the Syracuse and Binghamton area as well. So please keep an eye out for some strong gusty winds, large hail potential here, and look at it as we go throughout 10 p.m., yeah, we're starting to knock on the door here to Cleveland, just west of Akron, Columbus, heading down towards Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky here. Look at this, Nashville, all the way down to Tupelo, and then east of Houston here. Yeah, this is crazy. This is more of a heavy rain event up here in the parts of the Adirondacks, the Mohawk Valley, just north of the Capital District in New York. Now, look at this. This is going to be a nightly thing as we go throughout the night. A nocturnal, some damaging wind, large hail. Look at this. We have some lines forming up here towards Binghamton and Syracuse continuing. Pittsburgh area. Some of these could, it's not going to be like a tremendous widespread event overnight, but some of these could contain damaging wind, large hail. We're going to propagate this here across parts of the Deep South as well. And look at as we continue through 2 a.m., 3 a.m. on Thursday morning. We got some big-time thunderstorms from eastern Texas, Tennessee, all the way up the Ohio Valley here. And even parts of New England will start to see, you know, will blossom some of these showers and thunderstorms. The Hudson Valley, Catskills, Poconos, still kind of dry here in the Harrisburg area. But watch as we continue throughout 6 a.m. Thursday, 7 a.m. Some of you might have travel plans ahead of the long Easter weekend for some of you that actually have a long Easter weekend. Take a look at this. Yeah. This is an area that we're going to be watching, too, you know, as we head into Thursday. Look at this. This is some strong to severe thunderstorms continuing, and we follow that all the way up the Appalachians here into the northeast. And let's go to the last couple frames here. 11 a.m. Yeah, we get some resurgent of some strong thunderstorms. We might have strong damaging wind gusts, large hail out of these in parts of Hartford, Connecticut, over to Providence, just west of Boston. And look at this. Yeah, Texas is really going to be under the gun here. Like, Take a look at our last frame. Yeah, you got to watch out for some of these. We'll start to have some damaging wood, large hail in the Atlanta area as well. So please heed those watches and warnings. Yeah, we're going to have some strong thunderstorms that enhance risk heading east. All right, so let's take a look at the European run here. Yeah, it's pretty well agreeing here with the explosive thunderstorm development as we head to Tuesday night and Wednesday. Look at that across the plains. We're going to see that solidify. Ooh, what just happened there? We actually skipped all the way to the end. Let's back this up a few frames here. That slider bar is very touchy but here it is yeah this is just before sunrise you got this big old area of strong showers and thunderstorms some you know tornadic damaging wind that starts to fill in as it heads east throughout the day you take a look at that so yeah uh there is no wintry precipitation until you get into parts of maine 
The big story is going to be these damaging thunderstorms progressing across the Ohio Valley and lower Great Lakes. Take a look at this. And that's going to continue eastward as we head throughout the day. Look at this Wednesday night. Showers and thunderstorms progressing east. Down here in East Texas, this is where things could really start to not just severe weather, but flooding. Look here at the parts of the Ohio Valley and then getting into the western Appalachians as well. And that kind of stalls out here. We get another resurgence here into the northeast as we head into Thursday. See that? Some more development with some stronger thunderstorms. That kind of... Ooh, let's back that up one frame. Look at that. We could see some strong thunderstorms here into parts of New Jersey and Maryland and parts of northern Virginia. So watch out for that. That kind of flares up later Thursday, and that's about the time of day we get the strongest thunderstorms that can develop. East Texas is just inundated here. This is not looking good for you. This just continues to be a broken record. Another system plowing into the West Coast here. Look at that. That feature across East Texas finally starts to move east towards, you know, Easter weekend here. Look at this. We go total washout here in the parts of Georgia, the Carolinas, and the Panhandle of Florida. We've got this big old blocking high to the north that is a cold high, but it'll start to bring in some warm air Easter day on the back side of it here. So that's good news. But you will have a rainy time of it and a stormy time of it here in Florida. As you see, that low pressure doesn't really want to go anywhere anytime soon. And next week, look at this Thursday, the 13th of April, we have another frontal boundary, a week one. So next week is actually looking a little bit quieter. All right, let's take a look at total liquid precipitation amounts here. Look at this insanity here across parts of the deep south and into... Yeah, it's not too bad up here in the parts of the northeast of the Ohio Valley. You can actually see there is that rain shadow here again. And it's it's quite prevalent in certain areas. But look at here across eastern Texas. This is through Friday. This is a crazy amount of rain here. So yeah, flooding is a distinct possibility. Two to four plus inches here. This is not looking good. It will be much more progressive up here in the Ohio Valley northeast. This will be racing to the east at literally 55, 60 miles per hour. So it won't have time to really output a lot of rain, a quarter to a half an inch on average. But to cross the parts of the south here, the big story heading into Easter weekend is going to be that continued deluge of moisture with this low pressure system that gets hung up over the deep south. All right, so I wanted to show you the Western Pacific tropics out here because I'm a little bit concerned about things flaring up out here now. It's been it's continued to be dry out here in the Philippines. Unfortunately, up here in the parts of Japan, you've had a rainy season with the cherry blossoms blossoming quite nicely, but the rain is kind of putting a dent in that. But he, my eyes are drawn, and your eyes are probably drawn to the intertropical convergence zone here as we head towards you know the rest of your Thursday here and take it into Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, things are going to be getting real out here. I told you a couple videos ago, things were going to start ramping up here in the Western Pacific. Typhoon season really starting to blossom here, and I would not be surprised if we get some spin-ups here. Look at one in particular, although it doesn't have much of a chance of getting to Japan. Uh, this is by April 12th. See this little feature right here? You can see it right in the center of your screen. This is a spin-up. Here's another spin-up. I think we'll see probably our first tropical storm out here pretty shortly as we head through later into April. And look at this. Yeah, these tail ends of these fronts. Here's another flare up so far in the Philippines. A-OK. -okay. So, yeah, two thumbs up to you. But look at, yeah, this, this is what I'm talking about right here. See this? This is getting towards the middle of the month. That's right around the 14th. Watch as we continue to put this into motion here. Things really just start exploding Look at this is towards the 16th, 17th. Thankfully, there does appear to be a lot of wind shear, though. You see that motion of wind shear shearing these off. So look at this. Please enjoy it here in the Philippines, China, Taiwan, Japan, because your tropical season is really going to come in with a big boom once it does. Extended outlook from a home down viewers, Bingham, Business, Grants, Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Take a look at this. Yeah, we're going to be looking at the possibility of some showers and maybe even some thunderstorms later in the day here on Wednesday, getting up towards the mid 70s. Though winds will be gusting 28 to 35 miles an hour. Wednesday night, those stronger thunderstorm potential as we move into the evening and overnight hours. You know, so definitely looking for the possibility up to a half an inch. And then we head towards Thursday, showers and thunderstorms. Yep, maybe some strong. And we'll be heading up towards 70 again. But as we head towards Friday and Saturday, it'll be cooler, breezier. Uh, not too bad, right around 50. But look at this, Sunday, Easter day, 
into Easter Monday. Look at that, heading nice and beautiful into the 60s. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern, at Susquehanna Weather for my local page, and guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter, at Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below, smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.